Hello, this is Tim Schnockenberg. I'm a University of Missouri field specialist in agronomy based in Galena in the southwest part of the state. And I would like to talk to you today about our fescue pastures. We need to take some time, I think, every year to assess our fescue pastures. Actually, the month of August is a very good time to do that. Whether we've had excessive rain or if we've had dry conditions, we can still properly, I think, assess our fescue pastures. This is the time of year we make decisions. We make decisions about whether or not we want to stockpile this field. We make decisions whether or not we need to do a renovation of these fescue pastures. And this is the time that's a very critical juncture in our fescue condition. So really, this can apply to hay fields as well. I think a lot of times our pastures are worn out. I think in many cases, there's not as much fescue in our fields as possible. This particular field I took a, a shot of in December a couple of years ago when we were evaluating it for stockpiled fescue. Walking across the field, the producer was really hoping to have some fescue out there that was stockpiled that he could graze and it was kind of a situation where there really wasn't much of any fescue out there. He didn't have anything to feed those cows that winter except for hay. And so as a result, we put him on a plan starting the following year to renovate that field and actually get a stronger fescue base on his farm. And so that way he can actually rely more heavily upon grazing as a feed option for his cattle that next winter. So, you know, evaluate these fields. Make sure there is what you think there is out there. Is your tall fescue stand really fescue? In many cases, they're pretty diluted down. They can be diluted down for a number of reasons. But look for broom sedge. See how much broom sedge may be in the fields. Of course, that's a sign of a potentially low phosphorus and low pH. We might find uh, fields that are inundated with nimble will, which is a warm season perennial that is getting to be a bigger problem in the southwest part of the state. Occasionally, we'll see Lindheimer's panic grass, which is a very unproductive, uh, unpalatable forage that's in the field. Purple top is one that cattle don't graze very well at all. And if it's dominating fields, we probably see this more in, in hay fields, but if it's dominating, it may be time for a renovation. And many of these have happened over the years when we've had some drought conditions in the last five or 10 years, they got a foothold then. And then there's cases where we've had wet summers in the last five or 10 years that has allowed for some other species to come in, such as globe flat sedge or any kind of the nut sedges that may be out there. Sometimes rushes will start to, to kind of get established in the field. These are perennial species that are very difficult to get rid of once you've got them there. Another one that has been a perennial species that has started to dominate some of our fields has been Kentucky bluegrass. And so you need to evaluate just how much Kentucky bluegrass do we have? I'm not saying that Kentucky bluegrass is a bad forage, it just doesn't produce the volume and it doesn't produce as much forage well into the summer and in the winter like we can get out of tall fescue. White clover may be another one. We have fields that are completely inundated with white clover, um, probably due to wet summers that we've had in the last several years. And so, you know, if you don't have any fescue base there, you're certainly not going to be able to take on a stockpiling venture. Another one that's probably a little easier to deal with would be the summer annual weeds. Foxtail is definitely at the top of the list of a summer annual. Frost will take it out. It's not very palatable. Cattle don't graze it. Crabgrass is another one, and we may or may not consider it a weed. It's actually a pretty good forage, but if it's dominating our fields, consider it a summer forage, not a winter forage. So if you need winter forage, we might need to deal with that particular field if it's full of crabgrass. Overuse over the years can lead to a lot of these problems. And so many times they contribute to the problems that we have. Look at those pastures, evaluate them in August. Look, you can see on the right, pretty strong stand of tall fescue with a little clover in it. On the left, you've got some gaps. And when you see those kinds of gaps, there's going to be something that's going to fill in those areas and you may not get full production. So evaluate those fields in August. So I hope these tips can help you as you're trying to decide how to utilize your fescue pastures as you go into the fall 
and certainly what can happen for 2021.